Well, welcome back to CST Questions. We're going to do 10 questions for CST exams. We're going to try to get through this as thorough as we can, as quick as we can, about 10 minutes. So why don't you join me a little bit about CST, and hopefully you guys are studying out there. We have 14 students that are about to take their CST exams. They're nervous. They're thinking, do I know everything? Uh, if you put in that work, uh, you studied, you tried to eliminate all kinds of scenarios, you should do fine, okay? But you join this video, we're talking about CST questions, we're going to do 10 CST questions. If you're not familiar uh, with the format, uh, typically I read the question, I'll put it up on the screen, uh, I break it down, I'll tell you A, B, C, or D, and then I'll give you some time to think about it. If you want to pause the video to answer it, because I will tell you the answer as soon as as I'm done with that question. So 10 questions, um, we'll jump right into that and let me find the first one for you, okay? And also don't forget, uh, that helps me out with the algorithm, why don't you like and subscribe? Uh, that helps with that algorithm, gets that video out there, helps me out personally uh, it's to try to spread this information. Uh, so like and subscribe if you can, hit that bell icon, all right? On to that first question. Is my head turned to the side? It is turned to the side. All right, on to that first question. Put that up on the screen right now. Here we go, all right? All of the following are factors affecting the choice of futures purchased or used, except. Now, if you look at that, it says except, right? So make sure you stop and read these questions. Don't assume, because most people will start reading the beginning. I got the answer and answer it. Now read it all the way to that end, all right? It says accept, right? Is it A, cost of a suture? Is it B, surgeon's choice? Is it C, the present of infection? Or D, patient gender? Which one, all right? Give you a second, pause that video. The answer is D, right? It doesn't really matter what your gender is, right? Does not influence the sutures. All right, good. On to that second CST question. All right, put it up on the screen. One, two, three, go. Put it up on that screen. A genin or a genin's mouth gag is used in which of the procedures? In which surgical procedure? Is it A, a T-A-H? Now look at it. They're all abbreviated. I think when you look at that, you start to surgically map this question. Uh, you want to make sure you know what abbreviations are, right? Really important to know what abbreviations are. So is it A, T-A-H, do you know what that stands for? Is it B, a D and C? Is it C, a T and A, or is it D, terp, right? We're looking at a Jennings mouth gag. Which would that, of those options used in which procedure, right? Give you some minute to, I'll give you a minute to think about it. It's C, T and A, right? And I'll let you guys look that up. Make sure you know what those abbreviations are, okay? Um, I can tell you, but I'm going to give you a chance to look it up on your own, okay? On to that third question. Take off the second one. Hopefully I did that already. Put up the third one right now, right? Put up that third one. A tissue formation in the proliferation stage of wound healing by first intention. Now, this confuses a lot of people. Is it A, second phase? Is it B, the maturation phase? Is it C, the first phase? Or is it D, the lag phase. So when you kind of study wound classifications, wound healing classifications, I think it falls into two scenarios. Well, wound closures, which is first, second, and third intention. And then there's wound stages of healing, right? Inflammation, proliferation, maturation, and remodeling, right? In this case, the proliferation stage, which wound healing is by first intention, right? It's going to be in that second stage. Proliferation is kind of typically right after inflammation, right? Look up the difference of those wound healing or wound, I'm sorry, suture closing and wound closures, first, second, and third, and then there's wound phases of healing. Don't confuse those two, okay? In this case, A was your correct answer on that. Pretty simple one. I'll give you a simple one. Throw it up on the screen. If you don't know this, well, I'm a little concerned, but I still like you out there. In accordance with OSHA, do you know what OSHA is? Regulations. Protective eyewear must be worn when? Is A, on some cases. Is it B, only when the only where there's a lot of bleeding? 
is expected? Is it C, all the cases? Is it D, on only HIV cases? When should you wear protective eyewear, otherwise known as PPE, protective equipment, right? It should be all the time, right? You should always wear protective equipment, no matter what. HIV, non-HIV, hepatitis, it doesn't really matter. Protect yourself, right? Assume like everyone is contaminated, right? <laughs> Answer is C, all the cases. That was a pretty easy one, right? I've seen that all the time. On to the fourth question. Let's see if I can lose track of my questions. We're on four, right? Four, one, two, three, four. All right, here we go. Fourth question. The procedure performed to remove ovaries or remove the ovary is what? Is it C? <laughs> is it A, cystectomy? Is it B, oophra hysterectomy? <laughs> Say that 10 times. Uh, cystocele or oophorectomy? So which one is the removal of the ovaries, right? The answer is D, oophorectomy, right? Salpingo oophorectomy. Salpingo, right, is the tubes. And the ovaries are the oophorectomy. Oophorectomy. Salpingo oophorectomy. Stop saying oophorectomy. <laughs> okay, on to the fifth question. Pretty simple question here. When cutting sutures, only use the tip of a blank scissors, right? When you're using sutures, should be muscle memory, right? Hand that needle to the doctor, right? The suture to the doctor. You should have ats and with teeth. What type of scissors should you have, right? Is it A, the iris? Is it B, a straight mayo? Is it C, a medicine balm? Or is it D, curved mayo, right? You should know it's B, the straight mayo scissors is typically used for cutting sutures, right? Pretty easy question. Let's go on to number six. Number six is during a neurosurgery, once the dura has been exposed, the appropriate sponge to hand to that surgeon is a what? Is it A, a Kittner? Is it B, a two by two? Is that a real thing? Is C, cottonoid? Or is it D, a Raytech? What is the most common sponge used in neurosurgery? And the answer is C, a cottonoid, right? Otherwise known as a peanut. No, it's not a peanut. A cottonoid, don't confuse those with kittners and peanuts. Those are for blunt dissection, right? C, cottonoid is your answer. On to number six. Question number six, put it up on that screen. The prefix contra means what? This is medical terminology. You'll have some medical terminology questions on the CST. You should know your prefix suffix in your root, right? Typically. In this case, is it A, does it mean down? Is it B, is it mean, does it mean difficult? Is it C, against, or D, uh, abnormal? Contra, the prefix contra. In this case, it's C, it means to be against something. Contra, lateral, right? It means to be against. What am I on? Question number eight? I hope so. That's what I'm gonna go with. Question number eight. Hey, these 10 questions are tough. Can't keep track of the number I'm on, for God's sakes. In this case, question number eight. During a spinal surgery, the following elevator is used. So we're talking about neuro, right? Hopefully you know your instrumentation, or, right? Is it caudal? A, caudal. Is it B, the Lemberg? Is it C, the Doyen, or is it D, a Cobb elevator? So what elevator is typically used in spinal surgery? I'll give you a minute to think about it. You should know the Cobb elevator is a large elevator used in a lot of spinal surgery, right? Manipulation of that, I'll give you an example, a laminectomy, right? They're manipulating that back. Maybe they're scraping off some periosteum, right? Cobb elevator. Question number nine. Question number nine. The artery located in the back of the knee. This is an anatomy question. So you need, some, you need to know anatomy, right? You need to know sterile processing. Wow, we have to know a lot of stuff for CST, for God's sakes. Question number nine, right? The artery located in the back of the knee is what? Is it A, the femoral artery? Is it B, the popliteal artery? 
Is it C, the radial artery, or is it D, the tibial artery? What is the artery that's behind your knee? In this case, it's B, the popliteal artery, right? So slow down, you will have some anatomy questions, right? That's probably an easy one, right? Where's the femoral artery? Do you know where that's located? Do you know where the radial artery is? Probably right down somewhere in your hand, and <laughs> right next to your medial nerve and artery. What are we on, nine? For God's sakes. Question number 10, let's finish this up. Even if I'm not on 10, I'm gonna stick with 10 at this point. The name of a position, I can't read. The name for the position when a patient is placed on his or her stomach. Oh God, that's so easy, right? Do you know your positions? Supine, is it A, supine? Is it B, prone position? Is it C, dorsal recumbent? Is it D, lateral kidney position? Right, in this case, we know if we're laying down on our stomach and our face is down, we're in the prone position, right? These are easy questions. I wouldn't just stop there. I would say, all right, what are some things we need to protect nerve-wise? We're in prone position. Is it your radial nerve or is it your ulnar nerve? In this case, that's the radial nerve we need to protect because our arms are hyperextended outwards, right? So now we're protecting the nerve that runs along the thumb. Not here, your thumb. <laughs> So what about supine, right? Same thing, if we're in supine and our arms are tucked in, right? We have the ulnar nerve we have to protect now, right? Dorsal recumbent is really just another version of supine. Lateral kidney, you're on the lateral side, right? So know your positions, know some of your nerves you have to protect. In this case, the question is, yeah, prone is your face down, right? Question, I'll give you a bonus question and we'll finish this up real quick, okay? All right, this is a bonus question, or it could be 10. I'm not really sure, but either way, let's finish this up real quick, okay? Prior to a total abdominal hysterectomy, which type of catheter might be inserted? Is it a Foley? Is it a Fogarty? Is it a Malcod or a Pelzer? All right, do you know those catheters? What's the most common catheter? Obviously, it's a Foley catheter. Do you know what B is? A Fogarty catheter? What about a Malcott? So when you look at these questions, and I'm going through them pretty quick, it falls on you to kind of go over it. I can sit here all day, right, and kind of go over these questions. It's called surgically mapping these questions, eliminating options, understanding all the options that they're actually providing you, right? It's gonna help you long-term to understand what the answer might be, because I'm not sure how they're gonna word these questions. You might think Fogarty might not be on a question, but it will, right? They might reword this and use some of these options. So it's in your interest, it behooves you to eliminate all this and understand the best of your ability, everything, right? So I'll give you an example, throw that one more question up and I'll kind of tell you what I'm talking about. Prior to a total abdominal hysterectomy, I would stop there. Do you know what total abdominal hysterectomy means? Right? Obviously you should. But when you're reading the question, start there. Because if you don't, right, you could be just guessing. And obviously, you can use what they call a process of elimination and try to eliminate some of these. And I would try to do that also. That's a good technique. But when you study, you need to start there. With the question, if you don't understand a word, you need to look it up. For God's sakes, Google it. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, you can use Jesus too. Anyways, that's it, right? 10 questions, hopefully that was 10 questions. Don't forget to subscribe and like, that helps me out, helps with the algorithms, helps me out. Don't log off right now, right? Like, subscribe, there's my little bell, and there's some other videos you can watch. This is a playlist, so go through this playlist. I think I have about 10 videos or that you can go through a bunch of these questions, right? Just kind of skim through them. Send me your comments, send me your suggestions, right? Helps me out. What are you guys looking for? I'm just throwing some random questions out there to kind of expose you to it, right? Also on the community, I put up questions up there and I see that a lot of people do answer those questions. So anyways, thank you for joining us and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.